In the thriving regional city of Ballarat, life goes on with bustling cafes, schools and shops. Yet every now and then, the ground gives a gentle tremble or a muffled boom. Locals might pause, glancing downward knowingly. It's not thunder or an earthquake, it's the Ballarat gold mine at work deep beneath their feet, using explosives to blow apart gold ore. Far below the heritage streets and Victorian era buildings, an active gold mine sprawls in the darkness, quietly reminding the city of its golden legacy. Founded during the feverish days of the 1850s gold rush, the city of Ballarat has grown into one of Victoria's largest and most historically significant regional centres. Originally spelt Ballarat with an extra A, the name was updated in the 90s to its current spelling. With a population now exceeding 110,000, it blends stately 19th century architecture, wide tree-lined boulevards, and a thriving arts and cafe culture with the legacy of its glittering past. Situated on the windswept plains of the Central Highlands, Ballarat was built on the back of extraordinary wealth drawn from deep within the earth, a legacy still very much alive today, both in its grand public buildings and in the active mind that continues to follow the quartz veins beneath its streets. And speaking of beneath its streets, let's journey hundreds of metres below the city and see what's going on. Deep underground, miners drill and set carefully timed explosives to break apart the hard rock. When the charges detonate, a shockwave shudders through the earth. On the surface, residents in some neighbourhoods feel a faint shake or hear a soft rumble like distant thunder. These blasts are a routine part of mining, and are scheduled at set times, often during daylight or shift change to minimise disturbance. Each explosion is engineered to break rock with the least vibration possible, and seismographs monitor every blast to ensure it stays within safe limits. Though the occasional boom might startle someone or rattle a window, locals have largely grown accustomed to these subtle reminders of the mine below. It's a unique part of living in Ballarat, sometimes feeling a gentle nudge from the hidden industry underground. Concealed from view is a vast labyrinth of tunnels, winding beneath Ballarat's suburbs and stretching below the city centre. Access to this underworld begins at an inconspicuous portal in the suburb of Mount Clear, just south of town. From that entrance, a main tunnel slopes downward for several kilometres, gradually descending toward the gold-rich quartz veins beneath the heart of the city. This long decline tunnel and its side passages form the arteries of the mine, connecting various shafts and working areas. The network doesn't just cover distance, it also plunges deep. At the lowest levels, the mine reaches roughly 700 metres below ground. In total, the Ballarat Gold Mine's tunnels snake for dozens of kilometres underground, almost like a hidden mirror of the city's layout. They run beneath roads and homes, though people walking above have no hint of the hive of activity below. Within these passages, machinery and vehicles haul rock and ore to the surface. The horizontal reach of the mine is astonishing. It fans out on the Ballarat like the roots of a tree, following the gold-bearing quartz veins wherever they lead. Few residents ever see this subterranean maze, but it's there silently expanding as miners delve further in search of gold. Gold was first discovered in Ballarat in 1851, sparking one of the world's greatest gold rushes. At first it was easy pickings, prospectors panned shiny nuggets from the creeks, but as the surface riches dwindled, attention turned to the gold trapped in quartz reefs deep underground. By the 1860s, mining companies were sinking shafts and carving tunnels to follow these buried veins of gold beneath the town. Throughout the late 19th century, Ballarat became honeycombed with mine workings. Steam engines chugged away powering pumps and lifts, and dynamite blasts echoed under the ground as miners chased the quartz reefs that ran for kilometres. The city's growth and prosperity were built on this subterranean wealth. Even today, areas like Golden Point get their name from those feverish mining days when the ground there yielded fortunes. By the early 1900s, most of Ballarat's mines had closed, the easily won gold was gone, and going deeper was often too costly or dangerous, especially as water kept flooding the shafts. For decades afterward, the great quartz reefs under Ballarat lay mostly quiet and flooded, remembered only in stories and monuments. Yet the lure of that hidden gold never faded entirely. Geologists and entrepreneurs suspected that rich pockets remained in the old claims, waiting for better technology. It took until the 21st century for modern mining methods and investment to truly revive Ballarat's golden legacy on a large scale. 
After a long hiatus, large-scale mining returned to Ballarat in the mid-2000s. In 2005, a mining company drove a new tunnel at Woolshed Gully on the city's southern edge to reach the old goldfield from a fresh angle. This modern effort effectively picked up where the historic miners left off, but it faced challenges. The first operator struggled to make the venture profitable, and eventually pulled out. A few years later, a determined Australian firm saw potential in the half-developed site and took over around 2010, heralding a true revival. The rejuvenated mine extended old tunnels and excavated new ones, and exploration drilling soon found gold in untouched veins beyond the historic workings. In some places, miners even broke into cavities that turned out to be 19th century stopes, voids where the old timers had extracted ore long ago. Discovering these relics deep in the rock was a striking reminder that today's operation is literally building on past efforts. Since reopening, the mine has steadily expanded, creeping further northward and deeper below Ballarat. What began as a single decline and a few drives has grown into the extensive network we know today. The operation is now a key part of the local economy. In a sense, the modern mine is standing on the shoulders of giants, benefiting from knowledge and lessons learned from those who dug here before. But there's an issue with Ballarat. Not with the town, but with the weather. Ballarat's landscape is famously wet, and water has always been the miner's greatest nemesis here. Ballarat sits at around 435 to 450 metres elevation, perched near the top of the Great Dividing Range's central Victorian section. This position explains its never-ending soaked state. I mean, damn, it never stops raining here, and I say that from experience. I used to live here, and the very first shaft I ever dug got flooded out within a few days of digging it. Sad face. Moist air masses travelling from the Southern Ocean are forced to rise as they hit this higher ground, a process known as orographic uplift. As the air rises, it cools and condenses, leading to higher rainfall compared to lower surrounding regions. This is why Ballarat is eternally waterlogged. Its elevated location on the Great Dividing Range catches moist air masses through orographic uplift. In the 19th century, groundwater constantly flooded the deep shafts, and massive steam pumps had to strain day and night to keep the tunnels dry. Even then, sudden floods were a deadly threat that could send men scrambling up ladders to safety. Today, the mine still fights the same battle, though with modern electric pumps and better engineering. Rainwater and underground aquifers relentlessly seep into the lower tunnels. To prevent inundation, pumps extract between 700,000 and 1.3 million litres of water from the mine each day. That's enough to fill an Olympic swimming pool every two to three days just to keep the tunnels dry and operations running. The water is piped up to settling ponds and treatment tanks on the surface, where it's filtered and made safe. Some is recycled for use in drilling and ore processing, and the rest is released in a controlled way or stored. Ballarat's miners, past and present, know this constant battle with water all too well, yet their determination has ensured that even relentless groundwater hasn't stopped them from delving after gold in these wet rocks. Operating a gold mine directly beneath a city demands both skill and sensitivity. The Ballarat gold mine today is managed by an Australian company called Victory Minerals, which took over operations in recent years. The mine continues to produce a significant amount of gold from high-grade quartz ore, using modern extraction techniques guided by lessons from the past. The current operators also make a point to keep the community informed, sharing their plans, blast schedules and environmental measures, so that the people of Ballarat know what's happening below and can voice any concerns. Strolling through Ballarat's historic streets, a visitor would scarcely guess that an industrial enterprise hums far beneath the pavement. This contrast is part of what makes the situation so remarkable. Above ground, the city flourishes. While below ground, miners carry on a 19th century quest with 21st century tools. From the occasional mild tremor to the unseen network of tunnels and pumps working tirelessly, the signs of the mine are mostly subtle, but they are there, tying Ballarat's present to its past. Each blast that gently shakes the ground, each truckload of quartz ore brought to the surface, and each bar of gold poured in the refinery adds a new chapter to Ballarat's ongoing gold saga. The residents above might only faintly notice the mine's presence now and then, yet the two worlds, the city on the surface and the labyrinth below, continue to coexist in a rare and fascinating harmony. Ballarat's golden heritage isn't just a memory, it is still alive. Deep under the town, 
shining out from the quartz as it has for generations. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.